So there's three major intra, no, intercellular signaling pathways. And inter means between. Cellular obviously refers to cells. So there's three ways by which cells kind of communicate, if you will. They're with with regards to hormones. Let's just add that in there. There's autocrine. Paracrine and endocrine. So autocrine refers to that if a cell wanted to do something, what it could do is it could release, if this cell wanted to trigger itself to form a specific function, what would happen is that there's little vesicles and they would have little hormones inside and they would release them out into the extracellular matrix or outside of this cell here and then there would be a little receptor inside this cell that this hormone would then come and stimulate which would then in turn cause a chain reaction and you know the the DNA inside the cell would be red and ultimately the DNA inside the cell is the blueprint so if the cell has been stimulated or been you know kind of told that it needs to do something well then it will just say hey let's go check the the blueprints the DNA the DNA will be read and then the cell will perform a function perform function whether it's to create a new protein uh, to do something or whatever so there's autocrine so it's kind of self auto refers to self so cells can be autocrine cells, which kind of they stimulate themselves, or they stimulate maybe one or two cells next to them. You know, this cell might also get stimulated. Might also be uh, kind of signaled to do something. Then there's paracrine. Paracrine is the same kind of concept that little hormones inside will be released to the outside. And paracrine is around. This means around. Para is around or nearby. So these will kind of stimulate, you know, adjacent cells, but more so than just one or two or, or itself, it will stimulate, you know, kind of a whole community, a little community of cells to to do something. And the last one is endocrine. And this is within. Endo is within. So you have some cells here. And then you have a nearby blood vessel. And what these will do is they'll secrete they'll secrete little hormones inside these blood vessels. And this is what the anterior pituitary gland does, and the posterior, in fact. The pituitary gland is it secretes hormones inside the bloodstream, then the bloodstream carries down these hormones to some other cell. The cell uptakes these hormones by little receptors on on its cell surface on its cell surface, and then you know creates a chain of reactions. And inside the nucleus, the DNA is there, and the DNA will be read and then the cell will perform a function, whatever it needs to do or whatever it was kind of told what to do. So that's, you know, autocrine, paracrine, and endocrine. And these are examples of intercellular signaling pathways. Now there's also another um, type of signaling pathway these three, the autocrine, paracrine, and endocrine concepts, refer to hormones or, or or proteins that are that come in and then they bind to a specific receptor on the cell. Now, in the case of you know vitamin D, steroid, steroid, and and th thyroid hormones, what these are capable of doing, let's say if you have a cell here and you have, you know, a, a double 
a lipid bilayer. There's two layers. These are these are really hydrophobic, which means they hate water and they're they're um, not very solub soluble in water. And so what they do is they kind of clump together. And because this is a lipid bilayer and there's there's fat these fatty acid tails, you can watch previous videos on on the phospholipid bilayer. But these phospholipid bilayer, they're also hydrophobic. That's why water, um, uh, you know, has a hard time passing through this layer right here um, because it's hydrophobic, and so water has to quickly pass by. It doesn't just camp out here. And so these vitamin D and steroid and thyroid hormones, what they can do is instead of having a receptor on the on the cell surface for these, these guys can go right through this membrane. And then the nucleus is here, and they can bind on receptors inside the cell, or on the nucleus, or, or you know wherever these receptors are. They can bind to these receptors, and they can cause effects too. And one thing that I've that I've kind of emphasized is that these receptors, you know, stimulate the cell to perform uh, a function. One thing that is also equally important that I that I haven't mentioned is that these that these um, hormones and these uh, signaling mechanisms can also signal a cell to stop or inhibit inhibit a function. For example, if the if um, you know, let's say. Um, uh, this cell, you know, let's say this cell right here is getting too close to this cell, and you know they they realize, hey, you know, I can't, you can't grow anymore. You're gonna kind of squish me out of here. You know, it could do a paracrine or an, you know, an autocrine, if you will, to the next adjacent cell that will inhibit that will inhibit growth. And these cells that do this, you know, this is another way in which cancer can be um, created is by these cells losing the ability to kind of care for or acknowledge the inhibit the inhibiting growth factors from adjacent cells. They just kind of prolifer proliferate and they don't really care who they hurt or what they hurt. So um, this is another mechanism by which cancer can be brought about. Now there's there's several types of receptors. I want to kind of jump back to the receptors for a second. And this video is getting kind of long, so we'll have to wrap it up here. But these receptors here on this cell, there's three main types, or not three main types, but there's three classifications that I want to discuss about these receptors. So there's these three receptors represent these three receptors here. And so this receptor, um, there's receptors, there's classes of receptors. These are the three most popular, especially this G protein. They're, they say there's only over 1,500 uh, versions of this G protein. So there's receptors with intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity. So if you have a growth factor that uh, that hits this uh, that binds with this receptor that's on this cell membrane, there is a, you know a tyrosine kinase activity inside the cell, and this um, um, kinase um, pathway activates you know certain responses, certain intrinsic or within the cell pathways cascades, if you will, to ultimately um, lead to transcription factor activation which just means that this DNA sequence here is going to be read, um, usually converted to mRNA. And if you don't know what mRNA is, that's okay. We'll explain it later in, in the videos where we'll talk about the steps of transcription in the cell biology videos. But for now, I don't want you to get too wrapped up with you know all these details I just want you to kinda of understand conceptually unless you wanna learn all these and memorize these that's fine too but I want you to get a a general feel or, or you know kind of an intuition about this 
these receptors and how they um, lead to transcription. And transcription means that the DNA is read, converted to an mRNA molecule, and then that mRNA molecule is kind of like uh, mini, mini blueprints for um, the cell to make proteins or do whatever it needs to do. These are kind of like the mini blueprints, kind of short handouts, if you will, for the cell to figure out or short instructions for the cell to to do whatever it needs to do. There is also, so you have the, the P13 kinase, you have the MAP um, kinase pathway that will lead to um, transcription. And then with the G protein coupled receptors, like I said, there's over like 1,500 versions of this this uh, G protein. And the G protein is they it's a seven trans membrane, so it passes the cell. It's one big long protein, but it kind of passes the the weaves in and out of the cell membrane seven times, and it has two main pathways. The this IP3 pathway and the cyclic A and P pathway. And this IP3 pathway usually causes calcium release and calcium can release can be caused to stimulate other um, other effects or cascade of vets effects within the cell it can cause be used for muscle contraction. Um, there's a lot of different things. The cyclic A and P or the C, um, C amp or this, um, CAMP pathway also has multiple effects and there's another receptor without intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity that lead to these JAKs or JAK or the STAT pathway. STAT is um, and STATS means signal transducer and activators of transcription that's what these stats means for and you know kind of in medicine how they say stat you know I want this blood blood report stat you know that just kinda of means hey really really fast um, and how that does that and why that does it really fast is because these proteins directly bind to the DNA so they don't have to go um, you know through some other steps along the pathway, uh, along the pathway to get to the transcription of this DNA they just go right in there and they just you know already activate this transcription process we're converting the this DNA to mRNA and which are the mini blueprints or the uh, you know, mini instructions for the cell to do something whether it's to inhibit a specific function or whether to do a specific function so that's kinda wraps it up for um, the nature and mechanisms of actions of growth factors and how it promotes cell survival and proliferation. We'll see you in the next video.